once I stopped caring about my timeline and how fast things were going to happen and I actually got to a place where I forgot that I was trying to heal my skin and I was just living an extremely healthy life and enjoying myself, that's when my skin finally healed. There's things I wish I knew when I still had eczema, dermatitis, and psoriasis. In today's video, I wanna share with you guys five things that if I knew back then, would have helped me heal way faster, and the process would have been way more smooth and way easier. So number one, you don't have to be vegan, you don't have to be plant-based, and you don't have to cleanse constantly to heal your skin and to heal your gut. What you see all the time is that people start off in a place where, yes, they have skin disease um, and yes, they are not healthy, but they're not as far off as they think they are. They need to do some gentle cleansing and detoxification. They need to figure out a customized diet plan that works for themselves as an individual. But they hook, line, and sinker, some type of uh, good marketing or some type of propaganda or some type of online guru who tells them the only way to heal your skin is raw veganism. This did happen to me. You see their skin disease getting worse and worse and worse. You see them losing weight and, and becoming very frail and becoming less healthy and less healthy and less healthy. And then a year in, they have lost 50 pounds, they're emaciated, they're malnourished, they're mentally totally gone, their hormones are wrecked, their skin has gotten worse, their gut biome has gotten way worse, and basically they end up in a worse place than they were when they actually started. And they've wasted like nine months or a year of their life, all because they had a belief and they had a desire to prove that belief and that bias correct. So I wish I knew when I first started trying to heal myself that there isn't just one single way. You don't have to be raw vegan or plant-based even to heal your body. And you definitely don't want to overdo the cleansing and the detoxification or you will lead yourself to a place that's worse than where you started. Hey guys, do me a favor. If you're enjoying this content, remember to subscribe, remember to share, and remember to hit that notification bell. Gracias. Consistent, mellow effort and daily habits are the key to success. You don't have to do anything crazy. You don't have to do anything too strenuous. You don't have to become an elite level athlete you just have to do the basics. You gotta move your body daily. You gotta move your lymphatic system. You gotta deal with the nervous system and immune inflammatory response. You gotta do the daily habits in order to heal and you gotta make them habitual. Number three, and this one was a really hard lesson for me and it's one that I've had to relearn over and over and over again. Trying to be too big, trying to gain too much muscle and too much weight are thinking that you're supposed to be a certain weight rather than a healthy weight that you naturally are. And on the other side, trying to be too shredded, too lean. When you under eat and you try too hard to get shredded and try too hard to have body fat that's too low for you as an individual, whether you're male or female, it will wreck your digestion, it will wreck your hormones. You will not get the nutrients your body needs in order to fully heal and to thrive especially mentally. A lot of times my male clients, they have this fear of being too thin and they are in a rush to get big and to bulk up and they turn to protein powders, which are absolutely horrible. They start overeating. There's no faster way to wreck your digestion than to constantly overeat and to add a bunch of supplements like protein powders and creatine and all of this bodybuilding stuff. When you are healthy, when you're doing some resistance training, when you're moving your body a lot, your body will be beautiful the way it is. 
Some people will be naturally more lean. Some people will be naturally more curvy. But everyone looks good when they're healthy and everyone does not look good when they're forcing their body into something that it's not. Number four, there are no shortcuts. The long way is the shortest way. It is the most direct path to healing your skin and it will take a good amount of time for most people. But the more you mess around trying to do shortcuts like crazy diets where all you do is eat grapes and take a bunch of herbs or if you just eat fruit and do green juice that'll speed up the process most of the time that makes the process way longer because it creates other issues that you have to deal with on top of healing your gut number five I shared this in the intro and it's the most important part of the video in my opinion the year that I finally healed my skin was the year that I stopped caring about whether or not my skin healed or not. I started enjoying the process of being healthier so much that at a certain point I actually would wake up in the morning and not go to the mirror and see if I had a flare up. I would not go to the mirror and see if there's any places that I needed to exfoliate to take the dead skin away. And that stress of progress and that stress of my life is only going to be worth living if I have healthy skin was holding me back more than I realized. It was like a huge pressure. It was like living in a cage. And I used to actually feel like, oh, I'm, I would put things off. I'm not going to start doing that until my skin is healed. I probably shouldn't start dating or being social or being an entrepreneur or starting businesses or trying to be out in the world until my skin is healed. And that's a recipe for disaster because it puts way too much pressure. Your whole life now depends on how fast you can heal your skin. The more you can make it fun and the more you go and live your life and do the things that you need to do and want to do in life and do them well, the easier the healing process will be and the faster your healing process will be. Stress, mental stress, suffering, traumas, many of those things are gonna happen in life. I mean, when you have skin disease, you have a lot of stress and it's not too fun to wake up and see a huge new flare up after a few good days of enjoying skin. Trust me, I know, I've been there. But how you respond to that and how you react to that is everything. I had a choice, you have a choice. You can have your flare up and say, okay, bummer, but what am I doing? What am I appreciating? Okay, I'm eating super clean, that's badass. I'm moving my body every single day, I'm a champion. You know what? I've never had this many days in a row where I've not had a cheat meal good for me. My digestion's actually better. That's really good. And you start to notice all the positive instead of just dwelling on your skin. The more you can get into this mindset during the healing process, the faster it will happen. And you never know, like me, you could get to a place where you're so involved in the healing process and it's feeling so good that you actually forget what you're even doing and that could be a huge breakthrough for a lot of you guys. It's a huge perspective switch. Hope this made sense to you today, guys. Kind of a philosophical video. Um, leave all your comments and questions down below. For those of you who are looking to get a hold of me to become one of my skin health clients, there's a link in the description box for a consultation. The Three Phases Workbook 2.0 edition is for sale. Same link in the description box for a consult for that. Down below, there's also a link for Skinessa, which is the probiotic I take every single day. It is the bomb. And uh, if you're looking for a good probiotic for your skin, that's the one. Link in the description box. Uh, on Instagram, you can find me as Stuart, Rob Stewart. In real life, I'm just Rob Stewart. And I put up a lot of content there as well. Anyway, guys, I hope these five little rules and these little things that I wish I knew before I started trying to heal my skin help you 